Welcome to Southern Counties Championship Dog Show 2017. Today we are joined by this year's Crust Best and Show Judge, Jeff Horswell, but it's not Crust we want to talk to you about today. Um, the end of last year we spoke to you and you talked about a judge's revolution coming about. You said you weren't going to tinker and you certainly haven't. The, the new framework for judges is comprehensive and a utter revolution. It is. I think it's, it's a, a, just a totally new system. Yeah. Um, of course, everything's not changed in every respect. Yeah. But we've looked at what would good look like and we've produced something brand new because I think the system needed change and tinkering wasn't the answer. No. N give us... It's a, it's a long document. There's a lot to get your head around, but give us a, a few bullet points. What are the, what what would you say the main points of the new framework for judges is? I think the main points are that before you can actually now step in the ring to be a judge at all, you've got to have done some basic education. You've actually got to have been in dogs for five years. You've got to have done a bit of stewarding. You've got to have done the rules and regulations, and you've got to have done the basic confirmation of movement and points of a dog. So every exhibitor will know in future that whoever's judging them has at least done the basics before yeah. they step in. And then it's a logical sequence of events, really. Um, you will, having done the basics, you'll then go to a breed seminar so you've got an idea on your breed. Yeah. You'll then be mentored as the next step by three different mentors. So again, you're developing your knowledge and your understanding of the breed. Having done that, you'll actually be watched judging a decent entry show, mm. and then you'll be assessed in a, a breed exam. So it's, it's a logical progress of, of, of uh, training, because at the moment, you could actually do your A3 exam before you've ever judged a dog, before you've ever done a basic seminar. And that just must be crazy. Yeah, doesn't make, it, doesn't make a great deal of sense. So yeah, no. as you say, logic. It's a, it's a logical sequence of learning. And you go, and at every stage people will say, yeah, this person understands the breed, they've got it, and therefore you'll progress. Yeah. Um, and what about uh, the transition? It's not a light switch, is it? We're not changing from, from current processes to... No, no, we're not. We're having a, I mean, the new system doesn't start till 2019. The reason it's going to take so long is actually we are building a brand new IT system to support it all. And that's going to take about 18 months to build and to test because we want to try and test it and break it yeah. and make sure it, it works. And then there'll be a three year transition. So people in that period can, can move across as early or as slowly as they like. And it also gives four and a half years for people who are more or less not too far off from being a CC judge now. It gives them another four and a half years to, to, to go through. To get that first opportunity. To get that opportunity. It gives breed clubs four and a half years to get people who they've put onto their A2 scheme through that as well. So yeah. hopefully everything should, should mesh and gel together. Um, and breed clubs, you just mentioned yes. them. Uh, possibly the people find that as the one of the contentious issues of the framework. But breed clubs are not going to be done with, are they? Not at all. In fact, breed clubs have, will have a bigger and greater role to play and a greater say because breed clubs will be given the responsibility of training their own judges. Um, they'll be given the chance to have at least two supported entry shows where they'll be able to pick the judges at various shows. Um, and breed clubs will have a say on they'll be able to mentor people. So the breed club will know who is actually interested in their breed and who is showing some talent in judging the breed. Yeah. All too often you, you, you get breed clubs saying, well, this person's giving CCs in our breed and we've never heard of them. Yeah. Well, actually in this case, they will have heard of them. They will have trained them. They will have monitored them on their way and they will have said, yeah, this person knows what enough. they're doing. Yeah. And likewise, if someone makes a complete hash of it, they demonstrate no understanding at mentoring, they make a complete hash of their club show, the breed club can say, you don't understand our breed, so therefore you can't go forward and, yeah. and decide which dogs are going to be champions. So it is very much a competency test? It's totally a competency test. If someone is competent, they'll progress. If they're not competent, then they can say, you're not competent at the moment. You keep need learning. to keep learning, have a bit more mentoring, yeah. go to another training event, just develop yourself. And the one other part of that breed clubs, breed clubs will be interested in is the 
list of judges. That's yes. now changing as well, isn't it? It is. At the moment, breed clubs draw up their lists. It's often a long and tortuous process. Um, and open show secretaries often say that finding lists is difficult. Um, I mean, you imagine if a breed club was to post out 100 lists, what that would cost. Yeah, yeah. What's going to happen is there will be one list of the various levels that people are at per breed. You will go on the list where, that you're qualified for. There'll be no personality issues. You know, yeah. We aren't putting them on that list because although they've done everything, we don't really like them. But likewise, well, I know they've not done anything, but we like them. Yeah. So we're going to put them on yes. the higher list. So it'll be totally transparent, totally um, you will go on where you're qualified yeah. for. And, and that, those lists will be available to anybody interested to go in and to see. So, and also people will be able to add to that list where they're actually judging. So if you're, okay. you're a secretary looking for a judge for your show, you can say, right, who is on that level two list for my breed? Okay, so those five people are judging in, my, in this area. That person's never judged in this area. It gives you a better idea of who might be available in that area who's going to pull you the best entry. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's a win-win for everyone. And again, you, you spoke about open shows. Some people, some people have claimed, oh, well, this is the end of open shows. Again, uh, there's a big part for them to play. There's a big part of them to play. There's another working party that's been looking at various aspects of the show scene. And probably towards the end of the summer, they're going to come up with some really good initiatives on open shows that they're working for. But I think if people think that I don't need numbers, so therefore I don't need to judge open shows, they've completely misunderstand what we're about. Um, and actually, some of them, I wonder, if it, are they judging because they want to learn or are they judging because they want to collect numbers and breeds? Yeah. But people will need to do open shows for their own personal development. And what this system is actually doing is putting people in charge of their own development within breeds. Yeah. So people who are really interested will want to judge open shows because they'll want to learn and develop their skills as a judge. Because there's no doubt the more you judge, the more proficient you get at judging technique. Yeah. Also, to be assessed or to be observed, you need to do a club show or a club supported show. What breed club is going to pick a name out of thin air and give them a club show when they haven't had someone on the committee who's, who's actually said, yeah, I've seen them judge a couple of open shows and they've always done a nice job. Yeah. In many ways, this is going back to perhaps how things were in the, the 60s and 70s when you had sort of doyens of breeds would say, yes, you've got nice dogs. We've seen you judge a couple of open shows. You've done a really nice job. Yeah. The next step is to judge our club show. And we'll sort of be going back to that. Yeah. But people will need to judge the open shows to, to, to get themselves in that position. That sort of scenario, just with paperwork involved. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but what about up at the higher end, when you're yeah. judging groups? Yeah. Uh, is there, are there changes to the qualifications at the, at the higher end as well? There are. I mean, at the moment, at the moment, technically, you could be a group judge doing four breeds and you could be passed for best in show doing eight or nine breeds. Um, is that the, the correct depth of experience to yeah. judge that? So we're going to say that to become a group judge, you've got to have judged, which means you've actually got to physically have ordered CCs, yes. to 30% of the breeds in the group. Yeah. That might sound harder because it's more breeds, but actually if you've got ability and talent, you'll be able to, yeah. to go through quicker. Again, competency. Competency. And of course, we aren't taking group status away from any group judge. Anyone who does the group now will be a group judge in the new thing. And, and we're going to say, to be a best in show judge, you've got to have judged three of the seven groups. Again, that gives a broader depth of experience yeah. to our yeah, best yeah. in show judges and hopefully that will will fi filter through and in, in theory group judges and best in show judges should understand all the breeds that they see into them yeah i mean nobody is going to be an expert in every breed um but if you're doing best in show you ought to have a pretty good idea as to whether that's a good toy or whether that's a good gun yeah. dog or whether that's a good terrier yeah. and you should know the basics of that breed and understand a bit about breed type. So it's all about getting more and more experience, more and more knowledge. Yeah. Uh, so you you've been at heart of developing this from from the start. No, no? I haven't. No. Um, this this has been a long, long time in the making, and a working group um, actually drew up the basic structure of right. what it might look like. 
I was brought in just over a year ago right. to, to, to join in because I'd expressed an interest in judges training um, and I've sort of ended up <laughs> taking taking the lead on it yeah. but no I, I can't claim the credit no. but I can claim to have come in and, and seen what they were doing and been really enthusiastic about it as the way to go. So having taken the lead yeah. uh, how do you feel now that just as settled people have been able to digest it a little bit are you happy with the response? Very, very happy. I mean, there have been positives and negatives. The positives, I think, are far outweigh the negatives. And what has pleased me the most is the most enthusiastic people about this have been some of the really talented um, breeders and exhibitors in their 20s and in their 30s who actually have said, this is great. We can actually see a open, transparent progress. We can see a way where forward. We can, go, yeah. we can see a way forward we can see that we aren't going to have to somehow or other scrape 50 dogs together in some breeds yeah, where you yeah. get two or three at an open show. We can actually see that if they show ability, if they put the effort in and work to learn, yeah. they'll actually make progress. Um, I understand some of the concerns some people have, have said and things can of course be looked at. But no, overall the response is really good. But the fact that the younger people in our hobby, who are the future of our hobby, yeah are so enthusiastic is, is, has been absolutely the best thing in this. It has to be said, being a young person, <laughs> seeing the, the new framework, it, it seems a far more logical way yeah. to go about the yeah. judging experience. I think it's logical. We're using technology. We, we're sort of bringing ourselves into the 21st century. Yeah. Um, and we're looking at, can the basic question is, do you get that breed? Can you judge that breed? Do you understand that breed? And if the answer is, Yes, go off and judge that breed. Yeah. Conversely, if the answer is no, you're hopeless, you're clueless, you haven't got the best first idea of judging that breed, you won't progress. Yeah. That's, uh, and that's, that's how it should be. That's how it should be, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, the, the, the final contentious issue comes to the price. Yeah. Uh, 26 pounds, it's an entry at a show. It's an entry at a show, it's 50p a week. Um, to actually build, the system and the staff time that goes into the first couple of years of getting this up and running yeah. is going to cost just over half a million pounds. That £26 money, pounds doesn't 26 sound a lot there, does it? And that half a million pounds is money that the Kennel Club are putting up front. Thereafter, to run the system is going to cost about 200,000 a year because we're going to probably have two, two five to full time members of staff devoted to it because yeah. there'll, be, there'll be a helpline available for people to phone in. Um, IT needs to be updated, we need to have licenses, so 200,000 do. doesn't go very far. No. So, and our aim isn't to make money, but we've got to cover the £200,000 cost. Now, what we've come up with is saying, right, it's a basic £26 fee to be an academy member, to have access of all the educational things that yeah. are there. Um, and we think from the financial modelling we've done that that £26 will cover the cost. Yeah. And if we find out that it, that £26 more than covers the cost because so many people are involved, we can tweak it, we can yeah. bring it down. Yeah. Um, but it's to cover. I think people don't understand how much things cost. No. Um, and that you know, if you're going to employ staff, you've got to pay them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. of course, of course. <laughs> um, but going forward, uh, yeah. so that's the that's how you get started and get involved. But going forward, judges once qualified, there is a, there is actual reassessments, if you like. They will have to pass a every five years. They will have to. Yeah. We, we feel that every five years, people have to will have to take the rules and regulations of requirements of a dog show judge. That's something that they can do online from the comfort of their own home. And of course, rules are change, do change on a quite yeah. regular basis. So it's just a, a refresher, so we can be fairly sure that judges are up to date. On, La on, on, last time on you on spoke, you said that exhibitors pay for an experience. They, so yeah. that's just making sure that the judges give value for money. Yeah, that the judges know the rules, they know what they can and can't do. Um, it shouldn't be an onerous task to once every five years spend 45 minutes in front of a computer answering a multiple choice exam and if you don't pass it then you take it again until you do pass and it's a learning experience as yeah. well 
sometimes people think they know everything and then they find out when they do something like that there are things that have changed that they haven't quite quite got yeah so but hopefully it just means that judges will go in the ring knowing the basic rules no ring procedure so they're giving value for money and they're not making mistakes which will end up with a row at the ringside yeah. a row with the secretary and a judge being fined no 50 pounds so actually <laughs> two years membership of the academy is less than a fine or about the same price as a fine it sounds fair. Point. Yeah. No, sounds fair. And we're treating everybody the same. Doesn't matter if you're a multi breed judge who's been judging and you judge every weekend, or if you're a breed specialist who just judges your own yet your own breed once every few years. We will all have to sit that exam. Nobody is above taking and resitting that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's all all moving in the right direction. Excellent. And you you must Good. feel you must have felt that around the shows. People, yeah. But, but it's been great. People come up to you, they say things, they say good things, they say a few things that they'd like to change. But it's good that it, it's something that's come out and we're engaging people. People are talking about it. Uh, obviously, people look at it from how it's going to affect them. But I, th I actually think the launch went far better than we could have hoped. And the reaction has been far better than we could have hoped. And it's added to a positivity about the dog scene in yeah. this country and if we can keep that going and keep everybody positive and really thinking that they've got a future in dogs then our hobby will have a great future. Well thank you very much Tom Jeff. End on a positive. <laughs> thank you. Okay.